FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Thrilled to have uh, Chris Arps in studio with us here. Chris, you're, you've been following this case like I have because you have uh, you just got back from Dallas uh, not all that long ago. Not n- not connected to the shootings, obviously, or the, the aftermath of that. But um, y- your your reaction to what we heard from, uh, from La Jeunesse in terms of the investigation? Well, I first want to send out my condolences to the families in Dallas and to the officer uh, in Baldwin that was shot. It's just a, a horrible situation. Uh, it's just a tragic situation, you know, all around of what happened. You know, there are a lot of African Americans that are concerned about the police uh, when they get pulled over, but to take the law into your own hands and to become a sniper and and kill, you know, these five officers is just not the way to go. You know, it was really sad. I I saw a a a story on CNN where one of the the uh, the sisters of one of the slain officers, and it just broke your heart because this guy was an all-american guy he was in the navy he was a police officer he wanted to serve his community all of his little relatives were proud of him and he was just taken in this senseless act of violence and it's unfortunate that the people that are kind of applauding this situation that's going on saying you know this is what the police deserves and all that don't see that human factor of it that this is someone's loved one who's been now lost to this you know senseless violence and the and the aftermath of it the devastation it leaves yeah you 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 have to you wonder about that do you agree with the theory that some people have put forth that 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 there was an environment sort of created that allowed these these this wound to fester a little bit in terms of the the anger that built up toward the police after the first two incidents, the, the one in, in Minnesota, the one in Baton Rouge? Well, the mistake that I think that the Black Lives Matter uh, movement makes, and they made that in Ferguson, is that no one wants to take away your right to protest. That is your, that is your right. But sometimes if an incident happens uh, that brings out the thugs and the people that just want to create anarchy, if you don't step back away from that, then the public is just going to reconcile those two groups as into one. And then the message that you're trying to get across to the public just gets lost. You know, after the after the situation that happened in Dallas, you know, you still had protests that went on, you know, in other cities after that. And I think that just kind of kind of sparks it. And now everybody just feels Black Lives Matter. Now they support riots and 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 violence yeah well you know it bears it bears repeating as many times as i've introduced chris here on the show part of uh, his organization is moveonup.org which represents conservative african americans and you've got a pretty good sized membership across right. the country right right so so as when I, when i started the show i mentioned the fact that people tend to lump all police officers into the same bag um have you had that experience? I, I think people stereotype black conservatives. Right. Uh, that when I read the the comments that you get on your Facebook page, for example, if you comment on what happened in Dallas or you comment on what happened in Minneapolis, the reactions you get are far wide ranging and not always related to the color of somebody's skin or which party they identify themselves with. I think there's there's actually two aspects of the whole Black Lives move, movement, consciousness movement. I think you have what we see, uh, the protesters, the Marxist socialists, the DeRay McKesson, uh, the young Black Lives Leader Matter, who's basically made this a a job for him. You know, he's got a $160,000 job for the city of Baltimore that's come out of all of the Ferguson riots. And then I think you have another class of black people that have had not so pleasant interactions with the police and have seen these latest incidents on a television where they're videotaped, where in their mind, they're thinking that maybe some of these incidents could have been de- de-escalated instead of them coming out where the, where the police officer shoots and kills person. I think you have that those two elements of the Black Lives uh, Matter movement. And unfortunately, what you see is is you have that element, which is which I think has some truth to it, but it goes past... Uh, when people like Rudy Giuliani and white people say, well, you need to uh, uh, take care of what's going on in your neighborhood. You know, look at all the murders and everything. Why aren't you paying attention to that? And each 
each other's argument is invalidated by the other because you're not seeing what I want to see and that side's not seeing what I want to see and we just talk past each other. Yeah, I don't uh, we had part of that conversation here yesterday about how we get to a solution. Maybe that's something we can talk about when we come back. Uh, Chris Arps is my guest right now. 314-969-9797-866-455-9797. That uh, memorial service is also about to get underway for those five Dallas police officers. President Obama has just arrived uh, there in Dallas at the uh, Meyerson Symphony Center along with the President George W. Bush. Uh, We'll carry some of that live when it comes on, and we'll be right back with more of the Mark Cox Show. That is the uh, Dallas police chief saying his family received death threats after this shooting happened. Wow. That's, uh, That's shocking. Even in light of everything else that's happened, it's shocking that as he was dealing with the death of five officers and the wounding of six or seven others, he's personally, his family's being threatened. That's amazing. I'm sorry, Chris, let's get you potted up. Go ahead. And the sad thing is, is he'll be on Ebony Magazine, the cover next month, as the greatest person, how he, you know, acted in this danger. And then if he keeps talking about uh, black people need to take responsibility and get off the picket line and join the join us, then it'll be the the biggest Uncle Tom sellout there is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, you see, we're able to already forecast how this conversation is going to go, yeah. which is also he part of the problem. He can't keep talking like that. Or he's going to be Bill Cosby. <laughs> Bill, yeah, Bill Cosby. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's a good point. Let me get to a couple of phone calls. People have been holding here for a few minutes. Um, Joshua, you're on the air uh, with Mark Cox and Chris Arps. What's on your mind? Um, I got a lot. You ain't got enough time for me. Um, one main uh, thought is um, police officers, I think that they should go ahead and get in with um, doctors and physicians. The reason I say that is because they sit in front of a target all day. They should be able to know where to hit a person to disarm or disable a person rather than, you know, shoot a person to kill. You know, avoid vital organs, avoid... Uh, oh my gosh! Everything okay. that, that that needs to keep a person alive. Because if you shoot a person in the leg, he's not going to run after you. He's not going to. He's going to be too busy limping to do anything. And well, as for, uh-huh, I yeah. I I'd, I'd need to get a police officer's point of view on that. I know what my father in law would say. He would say when he was in the academy, if you felt your life was threatened, you, you're 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 taught to eliminate the threat. And you oh, and you keep okay. shooting until the threat is eliminated. At least that's how, that's how they used to train police officers at the academy. So what you're talking about would be a a new approach. And and I don't know if officer I don't know if as a police officer they're going to be comfortable with that or not. But I, I'll hit a like like hit a shoulder. You keep moving. I'll hit the other shoulder. You got to follow. Okay, I hit the <laughs> kneecap. You got another one. I'll hit the other kneecap. Yeah. They go to move. But I'm going to be able to bring you in to get prosecuted. But let me ask you this, Joshua. Have you ever been shot at? No. So, so for most police officers, that is a decision. Their response time is a matter of seconds. They have to make a decision in split seconds as to whether or not they're about to get, if they feel they're about to get shot or somebody else is about to get shot. I mean, taking, taking that extra time to aim at the kneecap instead of, uh, you know, the center of the chest, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a police officer. I have a, I can't really comment on whether or not that would be effective policing or not. Chris, right. you have okay. any thoughts? Well, I think you're also, you know, your concealed carry classes and in the police academy is if you take out your gun, it's not to scare anybody. It's to shoot somebody and to neutralize them. So Yeah, I think that's how the police are generally trained on that. Yeah. Um, and, Joshua, anything else? Oh, uh, yeah. And as for, uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, the Black Lives Matter, you know, all lives matter. But right now, they, uh, what is going on in Dallas, people need to understand, okay, the officers have handcuffs, they have the taser, they have the guns themselves, they have the knife sticks, and they just displayed that they have bombs, too. You I mean, come on now, the African Americans, yeah, ooh, we got our guns. You guys do not have enough bullets. But now they're displaying, we have a level up that you guys have, so best thing to do is just calm down and focus on what needs to be focused on education yeah. Yeah. uh finance uh home stability uh family 
things that need to be important so that you could go to an officer but like, sir, you know, this is the problem, sir, this is the issue, rather than, like you said, do the, the police officers are not psychologists. They're, I mean, there's a, they're not this, but people call them for... Everything. Exactly. Right. Yeah, Joshua, g- good points all. I, I, I mean, I appreciate you bringing that up. People do need to calm down. I mean, that, 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 that's, that's the start on both sides, right? Yes. De-escalation, I think, is what is just what Joshua was talking about. Yes, and, and, and as we were talking during the break, I think that's an issue that a lot of African Americans have. A lot of them aren't with the, the socialist Marxist aspect of Black Lives Matter, but they are concerned about some of these police shootings where it looked like there could have been some de-escalation techniques that it could have been used instead of lethal force. Yeah, like I said, I've never been faced with um, somebody pointing a gun at me, so I'm not quite sure how I'd react either. Uh, Johnny, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hey, guys, no problem. I appreciate you taking my call. I I don't disagree with most of what the the gentleman earlier said. Um, I just wanted to state real quick, though, I'm a firearms instructor and self-defense instructor for extreme tactical defense, and we teach Krav Maga, and we try to implicate a lot of high-stress scenario training. And one of the things that people don't understand, and it's not their fault, they just they plain just don't understand it because they've never been in the situation is that in a high stress situation, like a self-defense encounter, whether you're a civilian or police officer, it is almost impossible to hit a target that's running at you, could be fighting against you, throwing something at you, shooting back at you, whatever the case might be shooting at a standing still paper target at a gun range. I've seen people miss. Now imagine that piece of paper is, a full-grown man with a knife or a gun or an, an attitude. I don't, and I have no, no qualms with any race anywhere. Never have, never will. That's not even an issue. We don't, we don't even usually talk about it. Okay. It, my thing is training realistically. There is no way for a police officer to train to hit certain points of the body effectively and not do more harm than good. One of yeah. the things that people don't think about is collateral damage and every single thing even as a civilian, as a concealed carry permit holder, every single thing that you hit with your projectile, once it leaves the muzzle of your firearm, whether it be property or another innocent person, you own it. So imagine the collateral damage that opens up to the world that we start teaching our police officers to aim for individual limbs of people in a high-stress environment type situation. Uh, Johnny, thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the knowledge there. I appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Yep, thank you for calling in. Um, I can't argue with that. Yeah. Uh, Greg, you're on the air with Mark Cox and Chris Arps. What's on your mind? Uh, yes, Mark. Uh, first of all, my heart goes out to all the lives that were lost. And uh, Hillary Clinton is passing out women's card. I'm an African-American, and I'm so tired of uh, us African-Americans using the race card like a debit card. I'm the real deal. I'm a 60s baby. I remember when it was the real deal. We could not. Uh, demonstrate. I mean, our children were killed, our wives, our husbands, everyone was was killed. This younger generation don't understand. They don't know. So what's going on now with the police? Everyone has to take responsibility. I live in the inner city, and the street I live on got a murder rate of its own. And I'm like, where is CNN? Where are the protests? Where are the marchers? I mean, everybody wants to say black-on-black crime. It's cram on crap. It's black on black crime because I live in a black area. I call right. the police all the time. When I see people come with gang waves like they're doing drug activity, I call the police. They all, they're always there. So when the police is in a situation where he feels like his life is being threatened, we all have to take responsibility. I mean, the last shooting of it, it's a lot of innocent souls have to be slaughtered because of the fear. I think it's fear. I don't think it's a, a racial profiling. It's just coincidence because, you know, no offense, we can be some crazy people. But long story short, but I do educate my son, and I do get stopped all the time. And I think the key point is compliance. When I get stopped, my hands on the steering wheel. Yes, sir. No, sir. And the police is stopping me. is young enough to be probably my grandson. Yes, sir. No, sir. You know, and whatever he says, I take the ticket. I'll fight that ticket in court but I'm going to go home safely. I try to iterate that to my 
children. Yeah. You know I mean, I said, son, if you get arrested and you know you ain't, you have no just cause. Yes, sir. No, sir. Put you, you know, do whatever tell you do. When you get to jail, you call me. I'll take it from there. But get home. But we got this uh, image in our head that the police is out and they're killing all our black people. All the killings and shootings that I've heard of this year from white cops shooting black uh, 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 people, my heart goes out to them. I'm not saying, you know what I mean? But my street alone, I've seen more killings than been on TV. I'm, it's a part of life to me. And I tell my son, get in the house. Don't be standing out the dark. If you're out somewhere, stay there. Make sure you're safe. Yeah. So I'm sick <laughs> of people using the race card like a debit card because I'm the real deal. I remember when we, and the one thing I agree with Obama, when he said our country is not uh, as divided as you think it is. He is right because he's a 60 baby too. Does he remember when we were lynched, when we, we were scared to walk mm -hmm. home from school? Remembers when one the, of his worst, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and when, the, it, it, when I was coming up and I'm walking home from school, a lady on the porch, a neighbor, what are you doing? What are you, come here, come here, son. I will go in her house. What's your number? I'm calling your mother. That's police. I don't. I, my house got broken in twice. How are we gonna do some uh, uh, neighborhood protection when I don't even trust my neighbors? Yeah, we, Greg, we got I, to take responsibilities. I, as, yeah, I, I appreciate your call. I really do. Thanks for your input. All right. Yep, I got to run. Thank you, uh, Chris. Any Wise thoughts? call. Uh, I hope that the Republican Party was listening because there are thousands of African Americans that have that same sentiment in this country, in this state, millions around the country. I can't disagree with with uh, with anything that he said. Yeah, comply. That's the main thing. You know, would you rather argue and be right, or would you rather be wrong and go home to your family alive? You know, mm -hmm. it, it's not. It's not worth it just to not comply to me. It doesn't mean you're selling out or you're being a wimp. But at that time, when the police officer pulls you over, he has the gun, he has the, the badge, he has complete authority. Just comply. And as like the caller said, if you have a problem with it, then take the ticket to court and argue it then. But that's not the place to argue. It is on the side of the road. Yeah, the, the fix is not going to be immediate. So that's the, the best advice I can think of. Chris Arps, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Excellent. Thank you for Thank having me. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you coming in. Thanks for spending some time with us. Uh, we've got much more ahead for you here this afternoon, including um, Peggy Hubbard, uh, who apparently has been banned from Facebook. At least she's in Facebook jail, and she's pretty hot about it. So she's going to call in and talk to us uh, coming up. 314-969-9797. We'll be right back. Oh!